Well, good morning, everyone. How are you today? Great. So you're, this is going to be a wonderful service. It's filled with wonderful music. Y'all are in store for a treat. Our announcements this week, um, our prayer focus is for those grieving the loss of a loved one. Uh, for many, especially that first time that they're celebrating Christmas without someone that was near and dear to you, it can be tough. So we want to keep them in our prayers. If you could sign the attendance pads and pass them down, that would be so grateful. I appreciate that. Um, there's a song sheet that as you came in, you'll need that for one of the songs. If you didn't get that, you can grab them there at the, by the offering plates. So you'll need those, it's a green sheet. Our giving tree gifts, they're due back today. If you didn't forgot them, bring them by the office tomorrow. Uh, Y'all have been so great, that room is full of wonderful gifts down there. And our preschool is doing its cookie walk. There are only about 10 more minutes left to go to the cookie walk. So if you'd like to go buy some cookies, you can have time to go get them and get back before the choir sings. So you can go over there and do that. Our Christmas Eve services are at 5 and 7 on Christmas Eve. And also we're doing the alternative uh, Christmas market. You'll see um, when you come in either side on the tables there, there's a green sheet there for you to fill out and leave a check there how much you would like to donate to one of these uh, areas, disaster response, global health, hunger and poverty, education. And these are for those Christmas gifts where you don't know, what do I get someone who has everything? And there's a card there that you can take with you. You can fill out the card and said, I donated to whatever cause you said in honor of you. And you can mail that to them as their gift. So I encourage you, if that's something you would like to do, um, you can do that at the end of the service. And with that then, let us prepare our hearts and minds for our worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Amen. And this afternoon, later, or tomorrow, you can go on our YouTube channel and actually get a down view of their hands playing that, if you would like to see that. At this time, we'll be lighting our Advent candle. Invite Binkley's up to come do that. Hear these words from Isaiah 35, 9. And the ransom of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ, our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And at this time, we'll stand for our call to worship. Which was that tall? Sing praise. Sing praises to the Lord who has done marvelous things. Let it be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy. For in our midst is the Holy One of Israel. And let us continue worshiping as we sing the first Noel. may be seated. Our next song is going to be led by the Powers family, so that's why you need your uh, sheet. They're going to be on video. We have not quite got where we can show the words and a video at the same time. But um, he's going to give it an update, and that was about a week ago, and since then there's been an additional update because Bailey's had an additional blood test since then. And he, he writes to me, he said, Bailey continues to be responding well to the CAR TC, CAR -T cellular therapy. The therapy is targeting her cancer at the cellular level. Her leukemia is propagated from her B cells in her bone marrow. And what the CAR T cell therapy is, is it took her own T cells out, they re-engineered them, and they put them back in their body about two and a half, three weeks ago. And what it's specifically the T cells are doing are destroying every B cell in her body, which is where the leukemia rise. And uh, she just got back this week the first test, and there were no B cells in her body. Now this is the goal of the prayer, that this is the test they want at six months. 
When she's been there 30 days with good tests, she'll be able to come back to Florida. The, the one negative thing about this therapy is it continues to destroy her B cells and she's no longer able to make antibodies for any kind of infection. So right now, every two weeks, she's in, being, receiving an infusion of antibodies and she's tolerated this well. But Chris has got a quick thank you with the fan girls there and so we'll let them do it and then we'll sing with them leading us. Hello, Satellite Beach United Methodist uh, from uh, Great North. Uh, we're sitting here in Bear, Delaware. Uh, Bailey's doing really well. Uh, we've made it through her treatment. CAR T is done, and we are home from the hospital. Uh, we have a long wait uh, to make sure that everything goes well. So we actually won't be back until the end of the month, probably beginning of January. But we just wanted to reach out and say thank you. Thank you to you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for the love offering that you took up. Um, it was so gracious uh, of you all to do what you did, and thank you so much for that monetary support, um, but also thank you for the continued prayers. So we'd like to offer you a song, since we can't be there with you, uh, just to sing for you so that you can worship with us, even though we're all the way up here.
Christmas. And one of the things that we do remember at Christmas time is that Christ did look down on our brokenness. And all of us are broken in some way or another. And he came because of that brokenness to restore us. And that is what's so wonderful about Christmas time. Well, let us go to Lord in prayer. Oh God of grace and peace and joy, we come before you this morning thankful. Thankful that you came down from heaven. That you looked down on our brokenness, our hurt, our pain. And saw that we could not be restored on our own, that the law would not do it, that we needed the Son. And we thank you. We thank you for all that blessing. And Lord, as we come here this day praising your name, enjoying the music of this day, we, we remember, Lord, there are those that are grieving this day. There are those who said goodbye to a loved one this year, and this is the first Christmas without them, Lord. And they're not sure what to make of it. But you are the Lord of peace. You are the Lord of comfort and hope. And so, Lord, we, we ask that you come and bring peace to those that are grieving this holiday season, this Christmas season. Comfort them. And, Lord, we lift up those on our prayer list. You know their needs. And we also, Lord, lift up to you that one request, that one name that is silent in our hearts that we name before you now. And gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ministry of this church, for the purpose you have given us. I thank you for all those who continue to give themselves to touch other people's lives. So bless, Lord, each one here, Lord, who has surrendered their life to you. Bless them, Lord. And once again, Lord, we thank you for the precious gift who came of Jesus Christ, who came and gave us life, and who taught us to pray the prayer we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we invite any of our children to head off to Children's Church. They'll be going that way.
We come out of that time where we lift up our tithes and offerings, and if you haven't placed them in the baskets, you can go ahead at this time or right after the service. Um, and when we get to the cantata, if we'll hold our hand clap of praise to God till the very end, because it's always kind of awkward, because some people go, do I pray, do I clap? Do I? Let's just praise them at the end. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. O God of grace and peace, once again we come before you with thankful hearts, thankful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, thankful for the spiritual gifts you give us, the talents you give us, the calling in our lives you give us. You bless us, Lord, and bless us and bless us. Even when we don't deserve it, you bless us and we thank you. Now, Lord, as we come to return just a portion of that blessing back to you in the form of these, our tithes and offerings, multiply them for your kingdom. Guide us in their use. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday to support the choir and, uh, of course, worship with us through music today. 
Uh, we ask uh, just a couple house housekeeping things, like Pastor Harry said, if you could hold your applause as we go directly into narration after each song. Uh, and also, if you could take just a quick moment to check your cell phones and make sure they are silenced. Uh, we might have had a little extra music at our 9 o'clock that didn't fit very well, so we would appreciate that. Thank you so much, and uh, please join us on this road to Bethlehem. <laughs> Sometimes the road we end up on is not the road we expected. Of all the places in all the world, no one expected to be on the road to Bethlehem. Nothing good came from there. Why would anyone go? But many would. Something had changed. Something was calling them, drawing them, inviting them to it. 
because suddenly the road that led to Bethlehem was the road that led to God. Why did they all come? Why travel all that way? Who in the dark of the night or loneliness of grief hasn't helped, hoped for a light that is lasting? Who, in moments of transcendent joy or fleeting beauty, hasn't longed for the creator and source of it? Who, when the world is so broken and unfair, hasn't desired a judge who brings mercy and justice in balance? All, all hope. All long, all desire this Messiah. It was this hope that kept each one walking toward him all the way to Bethlehem.
and Joseph began on their road to Bethlehem quietly, with gentle angels, dreams, and songs. The vision was beautiful, but the road was long. How easy it would have been for God to deliver this small family on angel wings or clouds. And yet here they were on a dusty road, step after step, faithfully plodding. Perhaps, as she went, Mary sang the song she had composed for this child. God has lifted up the humble. He has filled the faithful with good things. Maybe she sang this even as the donkey carried her through the dust. Perhaps, as he went, Joseph listened to this song from his wife and leaned just a bit closer to her, to the donkey, to the unborn child. Maybe he wondered at her words as his stomach rumbled. Could such hope be true? Be here? He set his heart on finding out when they reached Bethlehem. The shepherds did not start on a road at all. They stood on sheep paths in the soft grass that night. They listened to the familiar small sleeping noises of their flock. They gazed up with tired eyes at familiar stars. And then suddenly something new appeared in the sky. Then they were wide awake. An angel, 
a promise. Today, in Bethlehem, a child has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Angel choruses appeared, singing glory. And then the sky was dark and familiar again, but nothing was the same. They gathered together to discuss what they had seen, but the discussion did not last long. If it were true God had come to them, what could they do now but go to him? They left their sheep. They found the path. They started their walk to Bethlehem. news the shepherds ever heard came in lights, proclamations, and songs from angels in the night sky. This is what started them down the road. But it was not just the journey that changed them. It was the person at the end of it. As they walked toward this promised king, they may have discussed what it would take to get a chance to see him. Would they be permitted? They knew they were not a well-respected group. Would they be turned away? What a surprise to find what they found, a scene they could easily enter and knew much about. There was no guard at the door, just a few sheep, which made them laugh. Oh, this is not a normal king. This is a king for us. In the quiet, in the stillness there among the hay, they held and beheld him, Jesus. This endless God made himself small enough to hold. How could it be, and yet it was here in Bethlehem.
The Magi came later, with no sweet songs on their lips or promises to follow. King Herod sent them to find this promised Messiah. Herod said he wanted to worship him, but even as he spoke, the Magi sensed the lie in his words. How could a person start on a road marked with suspicion, deception, and destruction, and end anywhere else? Herod set them on that dark path, but it was a star in the sky that lit their way. It was a star in the sky that replaced their suspicion with joy. It was a star in the sky that illuminated Jesus' small face, God's great love. They gave their gifts freely. They knelt at his small feet. They heard the voice of God in his small words. They felt the love of God in his small presence. Having seen and heard, they left Bethlehem, but Bethlehem never left their hearts. Every path leads to God when it is God you are following. You might not know what road you're on today, or you might not be sure where it leads. 
It could be. You're on a road you didn't choose, or at least would not again. Nothing about where you are is an accident. You are here today. And whether through words, songs, light, or some quiet hope, Bethlehem calls to you. A child has been born there, Jesus Emmanuel. And even as you make your way to him, Jesus has come to you. We have been blessed this morning by so much music 
and just a great way to praise God. Um, as we come to the end of the service, I need four people who can help me move the altar. So if you, four people, raise your hand. Who can help me move the altar? One, two, three, four. Come down here right after the service, after the benediction. Let us stand for the benediction. Let us reach up and grab God's hand because we are on a journey and God is walking with us and he's got hold of us and he won't let us go. So as you go through that journey, as you journey to Bethlehem, as you journey to seek God, to praise God, to love God, go knowing that God has you. He is holding you and you go in his power, his purpose, and his love. So go in that love. Amen.